We put our hands together for the Met Police, my close friend, Borough Commander Andy Britton. Hidden away Mateo, off a busy you. road in good Brixton you, is the Ruach City Church. This here. congregation you, isn't Lambert here said. to listen to a sermon, though. Ringo's They're looking for answers. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, put your hands together for the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police. The Commissioner is here by invite, and he knows why. Tragically, the relationship with black communities is amongst the worst, if not the worst. On the agenda, trust and confidence, the safety of women and girls, and stop and search. We couldn't film the question and answer session, but we caught up with Sir Rowley afterwards. You said in your opening speech that the Met has lost its way a bit, and you have a bit of housekeeping. Wouldn't you describe the Met's current situation more as a disaster? Um, I'm speaking colloquially in there. We have some really serious challenges, and I've been completely candid about that. Uh, trust of um, London in policing has gone down markedly over the last four years. And More than the last four years, though. I mean no, no, gone down markedly over the last four years, and most acutely, at the bottom of the trust scores is our relationship with black communities. I am really privileged that today that the leaders of black churches across London have reached out to me and um, offered to meet with me and discuss how we build relationships. They haven't invited anybody here for over a decade, so I'm really privileged in that. I'm going to make a short statement. No officer steps out at the start of the day. Now, you mentioned that trust has been falling considerably over the last four years. Many people here will remember the statement you made following the Mark Duggan inquest, you said, of building trust, we know it will take time. That was 10 years ago, and you're still saying the same thing. The trust level um, 10 years ago, um, if you look at the trust in local policing, it was in the high 60s in percentages, and it was stable at that level, and clearly that was talking about a contentious incident. Um, that trust stayed at high 60s until sort of about four years ago. And but then you heard uh, somebody in there saying that he doesn't feel like you're saying anything new. And then instead, and others said I were saying something new and they've invited me here because I'm saying new things about, I'm taking on standards, I've been much more robust about that and also really robust about we are going to build the strongest ever neighbour policing in London. You talked about the Met not spending enough money and time on training. I have. You said that the approach isn't mature enough. Why on earth is the largest police force in this country not spending enough money and time on training? Um, we've had a decade of, um, uh, decades of cuts and resource pressures. It's a real challenge. One comparison I've made is on leadership training. Um, so in, in, in the audience today we had Seb, who's the new chief superintendent running a large part of London. Um, a, colonel, a colonel, which is a sort of comparable size command in the military, will have had 72 weeks of leadership training since leading Sandhurst. Sam will probably not have had even a handful. That is a crazy difference, and that's about cuts in national police training and local. The issue of culture, that's not going to be fixed, is it, with new technology or more staff necessarily? An intelligence function, for example, isn't going to stop officers on WhatsApp groups, you know, joking about calling their pets Auschwitz or referring to women as silly slags. We've got some gruesome cases. I've been really candid. I'm going head on into the storm. We're lifting over the stone and everything under there we're tackling. Surfacing those issues, of course, puts those stories out publicly and it's very, very painful, but that's the only way we'll but deal with it is by, is by moving them on. A lot of people feel like those comments are platitudes and they're looking to you, Commissioner, they're not to platitudes, say something they? authentic they're, 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 it's, it's that comes from your it's heart. It's nonsense to say it's platitudes, isn't it? When there's cases appearing in public, officers are being sacked, I promised an update at the end of March where we'll be talking about the progress we're making and the reviews we're doing and the toughest approach we're taking to professional standards. They're not platitudes at all. We're making real progress and I wouldn't have been invited here today if that community thought these were platitudes. I want to ask you Commissioner how you are does this sit very heavily on your shoulders? It is really painful to be a, a, lot, a career police officer in multiple forces and for us to be in a difficult uh, moment like today as the tens of thousands of good officers in the force find it very very painful so what I've got to do is motivate, train and equip the fantastic people we've got who want to work with different communities in London and build trust at the same time of dealing with those that our systems and leadership has been too weak at rooting out. Some of the issues raised in the Q&A, Chris Cabber's death, racial profiling 
and data on ethnic disproportionalities. This was a great start in that he was very transparent about some of the challenges which we haven't often heard um, from commissioners in the past and obviously his willingness to be here and hear from our community. Um, however though, he often talked about trust and what are we practically doing to repair that trust between our community and the police at large. So the dialogue continues and people wait to see where the Metropolitan Police Service goes next.